Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature in Your Backyard. And I'm back in my backyard, and I'm pretty lucky because i got a pond. I'm following up on a story that we started when I first started doing Nature in Your Backyard when the governor of Virginia closed schools because of COVID. And one of the first things I did was I came down here to the pond with this net, and we had to see what we could find. And I found tadpoles. We also found some newts and water bugs and a couple other different things that made features my videos. And we also found some eggs, which at first I thought were salamander eggs because of the way they were shaped. It was a jelly mass about the size of my fist and I could see little dots in it. And so I took those aside and put those in a bucket. And we're gonna get to look at, at both sets of what happened to those eggs and also what's happening to the tadpoles. Now, one of the interesting things about these tadpoles is that we found them in March and they were big. They're about two, two and a half inches long. So they must have overwintered as tadpoles. So they're, the eggs that they hatched from were probably hatched sometime last year, maybe even a little longer. You know, it's hard to say because everything's sort of on a spectrum in biology. And usually we think of tadpole eggs as being laid and hatching out or developing into tadpoles and becoming frogs by the end of the season. Well, these tadpoles overwintered, so they're older. And let's, well, so let's see what we can find. So a month or two ago, I used this net, I went in the pond, and we got some tadpoles out. So I'm going to do the same thing and we'll see what we can find and see how the tadpoles have developed. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's to make this invasive. There's exhaust. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen and it's So here I am at the pond. A lot of times I can just stand near it. Oh, something moved there, something moved there, and just swing my foot over. And from the shadow of my foot passing over the edge of the pond, a lot of things will sometimes just take off running. And this is where I'm gonna sample with my net. And this is where I know a lot of these tadpoles and are, are hanging out. So this is what my net looks like after I drag it in. And the first thing I see is a dragonfly nymph. And if you haven't seen my episode on dragonfly nymphs, you'll have to check that out. This is a dragonfly nymph, a ferocious pr predator. Check out my video on ferocious predators. And so I'm going to toss him back into the pond. Now, over here, I saw some things flapping around. What is it? And we got a tadpole here. So I'm gonna take this guy and put him over in my little tank over here. So after a couple of tries, here what I found. And so it looks like we got tadpoles of sizes. I got the big tadpoles, and then these uh, looks like a little bit smaller sized one. But how is the big tadpole different from the other ones? And you can see that he has developed some rear legs. And you can see those legs pretty well and he's already using them. He's using them to swim and they're webbed already and he's using his tail at the same time. So this tadpole is starting the transformation into a frog, but these other ones are not. And I'll bet you these other ones I'm gonna find that they'll grow and probably overwinter just like this big one here did. Here's another view, see if we can get a, a, a better look at these guys. And there he goes. He's kind of scary, almost scary looking, isn't he? And you can see that he still has some gills on the sides of his head or a gill opening where the, his gills are hidden under a fold of skin and these guys really want to get out let's see if i can pick him up and of course my hands are are very wet and he is wiggling too much for me to show you 
here's another look at our tadpoles and do you see how that big one that's got his rear legs forming went just went up to the surface to get air so right now those smaller tadpoles have gills which are hidden under a skin flap so you can't see them sometimes with amphibians you can see their external gills particularly with newts of salamanders that live in the water when their eggs are laid in the water they'll hatch out as newts and they'll have external gills as they get older the tadpoles will lose those gills and he'll start getting air from the surface in fact you can see he's got an air bubble in his mouth now from where he went up and gulped some air so at this stage he's sort of half tadpole half frog so he's got his two rear legs and the next thing we expect to see is that his front legs will start to form and as his front tail starts to form we'll watch for changes in his shape of his body and the shape of his tail and the length of the tail because these guys are going to develop into frogs and i'm guessing that these guys will develop into a uh, green frog so like I've told you several times, I'm learning along with you guys. I don't know all the answers, and that's why I always want you to fact check me and look things up. You know, I get excited and I'm live. So the reason I think these tadpoles are green frog tadpoles is because that's what I've heard here in the pond. And if you go back to my episode on green frogs, so you need to look at my previous tadpole episode, my green frog episode, look at those again. Green frogs make a sound that sounds like a plucked banjo string. That's a little bit out of tune. And if you listen very carefully at the end of my green frog video, you can hear it. When you have access to the internet, Google green frog sound or the Virginia Herpetological Society. Look up green frogs and see what they actually sound like. So that's, that's what I've heard here in the pond. And that was a green frog that I found close by. So I'm making the hypothesis, which in science is an educated guess, that these are green frog tadpoles. And we'll find out for sure because we're going to see them grow. Now, if I'm wrong, we'll find that out too. Um, it's possible they're bullfrog tadpoles, but I haven't seen a bullfrog here. But that doesn't rule out the possibility. There's a lot of variation in, in nature. And like I always tell you, you never know what you're going to find. So... We'll watch what happens. So these tadpoles, I'm gonna put them back here in the pond and I can check, you know, virtually every day I can, I can look for tadpoles. So we'll wait a couple weeks and I'll come back and I'll put the net out there again. We'll pull them in and take a look. So in this video series, Nature in Your Backyard, I'm actually following two sets of tadpoles. You just saw the video for the, the first set of tadpoles and then I was telling you about a set of tadpoles that came from a mass of eggs about the size of my fist. So these ones, I put that egg mass in a five gallon bucket because I watched it in the pond. The newts were virtually attacking it and eating the eggs and the larva right out of that egg mass. And I've got so many newts in this pond, I knew that that egg mass would be eliminated in no time. So I took those eggs and put them in a five gallon bucket. But being right here next to the pond, I can change the water every day. I can simulate nature conditions with every single thing that they need, except for the predators, which maybe they don't need. So I've been changing the water every day and every day bringing in fresh five gallon buckets of water with fresh algae in it. So let's take a look at those eggs and seeing what's happening with those tadpoles. These are the tadpoles that hatched out of that egg mass that I had. And I'm keeping these guys in the shade in five gallon buckets. And I just change the water. And every time I get water, I take in some new water that has green algae in it. You can see how green it is. Because these guys are primarily vegetarians and they feed on green algae. Because I've got the pond right here, I can change the water every day. I can keep them 100% healthy and I'm also protecting them from predators. So when I return 
all of these to the pond shortly, I'll have saved them from a lot of predators. And primarily, probably the newts that are in this pond and um, that uh, are voracious predators and would certainly have eaten most of these by now. So here are my little tadpoles and you can see they're really little. You can see there's some green algae in there. I'm gonna try to zoom in on these guys. And you can see that they have the classic tadpole shape. It's a kind of round, two eyes, and a long flat tail. And with that algae, you can see that there's a lot of aquatic activity there besides the, there's a water boatman swimming by and some other, looks like aquatic uh, crustaceans and shrimp. I'm gonna put these guys back in their bucket now. Here are some last shots of the tadpoles. We're gonna come back to the pond again another time, but I just wanted to show you some more pictures of the pet tadpoles and see how they swim around and move and the differences between the, the two different ones. And uh, we'll be putting these back in the pond here shortly and you can see me doing that. So thanks for watching Nature in Your Backyard. Hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be back to see these guys again. Stay tuned.